Well, thank you so much, uh, Daniel Wahome, back in Nairobi. Like you mentioned it, uh, first let me just uh, congratulate you on that wonderful conversation right there on the studio. It is, uh, well, rugby is quite a, a big sport in the country here. Talk about this uh, uh, Kenya Sevens that has uh, made Kenya proud on the ex uh, international platform. And uh, the other time, uh, uh, Daniel told you every sport begins from the grassroots or machinani altogether if you can mention that remember the other time we told our viewers about the Manyata Resource Center where they sharpen uh, the youth there on various skills among them the footballing skills uh, being the flagship uh, pro part uh, project which is part of that whole program uh, that is Manyata Resource Center and today we are drifting a little bit away from the football and now into the rugby and uh, with me here I uh, have uh, Joy Cox Mavar and Eric Ondieki, who are that is just part of the uh, management of uh, Kisumu Rugby Football Club, will just they will tell us briefly about that club and also uh, part of this discussion will touch on the upcoming uh, tournament that is uh, Dallas Sevens. And right away, let me just kick in and uh, bring uh, on set here uh, that is Jay Cox Mavali, who is actually the secretary of uh, Kisumu Rugby Football Club. Joy Cox, really <coughs> one question that uh, the viewers would want to ask, which I've also been asking myself. It is Kisumu Rugby Football Club. And uh, I just paint for us a picture. How is this uh, rugby and football uh, uh, intertwined all together? Uh, thank you very much, Bona uh, Wycliffe, uh, for this invite. It's a great opportunity and honor to be on this deck today to talk about rugby. Mm -hmm. Actually, rugby is one famous sport in, in this country that... Um, is growing uh, attention day by day, and sure. I think uh, is also carrying uh, the Kenyan flag high, uh, uh, apart from athletics. So, uh, club, basically, there's the rugby aspect of the of the game that is being played by the hands. Yes, by passing, mm -hmm. and also uh, there is the football aspect because uh, before the game starts, it starts with the kickoff. It's the ball is kicked, so there's this, uh, the ball aspect of kicking the ball. So that's now the football. Mm -hmm. That is the foot aspect. Oh, yeah. So you also need to understand the difference between soccer and football. Mm -hmm. So that's why the football aspect comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wonderful. And uh, now let me just ask about the Kisubo Rugby Football Club. You mentioned to me earlier that it is a community based organization and everything is done for, uh, for uh, with a cause or for a cause yes tell me briefly when was this founded and what has they been the prime objective and what has the journey been like okay basically kisumu rfc is a community club mm -hmm. that uh, started way back in 1982 mm -hmm. but uh, in prior years uh, it was an evolution where uh, we have uh, the uh, the colonialist came the white uh, men came with the game to mm -hmm. this lakeside city it had different versions of uh, uh, names, Victoria, Rugby, something of the sort. But now, basically, Kisumu uh, Rugby Football Club was born in 1982, which is basically a community club. Mm -hmm. Our core business is about uh, sports, and uh, specifically the rugby, uh, the rugby sports, yeah. or the, uh, the rugby sport as a, as, as a discipline. Our main objective is uh, basically to nurture talent, uh, whereby we get young boys from uh, within Kisumu County or Kisumu and its environs mm -hmm. uh, to keep them busy. You yeah. understand? <coughs> See, these young young people, when they get idle, mm -hmm. and uh, if I can get back to the Bible, it says, uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Yeah. So especially when these uh, young men finish their high school, mm -hmm. they don't have much they're doing. Yeah. So just to keep them busy, uh, they come uh, train with us, we train, we train them now even to become professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, over and above, in, into the same, uh, it's a more of a, a, a CSR kind of uh, activity mm -hmm. where the community feel like they're associated with the sport and also it is impacting the community in terms of exposing talents. Mm -hmm. uh, we produce a lot of talents. Um, I can just mention some few names, uh, included, uh, including uh, Andrew Amonde, who was just the re recent skipper for uh, Kenya Sevens. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Jack OJ, we have Martin Owila. Mm -hmm. You know, the list is endless. I also remember. We have Teddy Omondi, who is now in France. Uh, he went there, prof uh, a professional rugby playing. Now he's a, he's a coach. 
So you see, the game has built careers. It has exposed. Even me, I can talk about myself. I'm just a, a, a player who was nurtured by the same same club now into into the management of the club. I'm just trying to give back. Mm. It exposed me into the professional world. Mm. Uh, we get connections in terms of uh, job connections and placements because this is also a corporate sport where corporates come together. Nice. You know, people uh, come have fun. Mm. So it, it connects. Uh, uh, the young talents to, to the world. Okay. Yes, I get it. And uh, given those names you've mentioned, I also remember uh, the late Benjamin Naiba also going through uh, exactly. Kisumu. Uh, if this is a community club, how is the community embracing it? How parents embracing this club in terms of allowing their children uh, to participate or be part of this club? Basically, I can say the yesterday years uh, there was a kind of struggle because most parents never understood the game well. Mm -hmm. Based majorly, they, they were seeing it as a risky game whereby they couldn't let their sons to come and get exposed mm -hmm. to these kind of dangers. But now, with the evolution and uh, now the limelight about the sport and how the sport is exposing <coughs> these talents, guys going professional, now there is a positive vibe about the game and the parents are now embracing and even we, we, we normally have uh, 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 guys come to train, maybe the old players, the old boys, they tag along their young ones. Oh, yeah. So that is already nurturing in itself. Oh. So it's now giving us a, a, a good caption in regards to transition. Oh, yeah. So uh, I can, currently I can say uh, the parents are very positive. Mm -hmm. Basically I have a son who I'm, who I'm also trying to mentor into this game. Mm -hmm. So it, now it makes it much easier for, for the game now to transition and grow. Mm. And even as I sit here, I wonder, you see, uh, most of community-based clubs, they undergo what we call, uh, what I may term as uh, some financial difficulties. Yes. And I understand football is, I mean, I mean, I mean, sport is, is, is devolved. I try to understand, I want to, to uh, maybe you can just help us understand if the county government of Kisumu or has a part to play in the management or other uh, developing this uh, Kisumu RFC. Yeah, thank you for that question. I think uh, what I can say uh, recently or lately, um, the current also, I mean, the county government also give a, giving us support. Mm -hmm. They're getting attention of the version of the game. Yeah. And uh, we are having discussions with the, uh, uh, the county government officials, including the CEC Sports. Mm -hmm. We've been having uh, regular engagements, recent one even being uh, today morning, mm -hmm. where we're trying to discuss about the sport, how the success of the event should be like. And um, you understand the current economic conditions basically in the country is not that kind of favorable. Mm -hmm. um, and also the county government as a whole has a responsibility to take care of all sports disciplines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they have the goodwill and I believe we, we are destined for greatness and uh, better things with the county government already they are giving us support, yeah. uh, though in kind. But I believe there is more that will come on table. Okay. So uh, it is very positive. Uh, they, are, they have the goodwill for the sport because this sport also is very, it's not all about sports. Sure. We're also trying to bring the aspect of uh, the economy whereby uh, through this uh, tournament, we have people who are coming here in terms of sport tourism. So it's called sports tourism. Mm -hmm. When somebody comes to Kisumu, they would want to visit Luangli, they would want to visit Kitimikai. It is exposing. Sure. And uh, also the, the aspect of the, uh, the economic impact. With these guys, when they come here, they are spenders. Mm -hmm. They will sleep in hotels, they will eat. You see, so it's also uh, directly uh, empowering the, 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 the local uh, people of Kisumu or the business community of Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, through that kind of aspect and engagement with the county, they are seeing the viability of them coming together and working with us in making the sports great. Mm -hmm. And also, basically, I can say we are the ambassadors of the county. There is no other uh, uh, rugby club uh, as big as uh, Kisumu RFC mm -hmm. in this western region. We have a rich history. Sure. These other clubs that are coming, those are, those are our, 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 let's say I can say, those are our kids. Mm -hmm. They are being born from Kisumu RFC. So okay. if you look at the history, where we've come from, all the way from 1982, We've born so many clubs, mm -hmm. even uh, the Kakamega side that is now coming in, becoming the, uh, over, trying to overtake us. Mm -hmm. But now we are also regaining our, our glory back because we are back into the Kenya Cup. They are just, uh, they are just Niwatoto uh, Wetu mm -hmm. in regards to, uh, they just born, got born recently. Right. And if you look at the players who are also playing there, most of the players also came from Kisumu RFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, I appreciate the fact that you mentioned, uh, uh, earlier on you mentioned the number of players that have gone through Kisumu RFC and uh, there is just one aspect of uh, this <coughs> community-based club. You see the nurture talents and uh, the, which the, uh, later on are being posted by other clubs. What is the club doing about uh, this whole aspect of nurturing uh, talents only for them to lose them to other uh, established clubs? So basically, mm -hmm. uh, as you put it, uh, this is a non-profit making organization right. whereby we are a community-based club. Our aspect and our objective is just to have a balanced community or society mm -hmm. in regards to uh, trying to positively engage these young talents, mm -hmm. these young guys who are very energetic. So the issue of poaching, basically, it's been a, a thorn in the flesh mm -hmm. because we have a, a rugby club that are sponsored by corporates fully yeah. and they have quite a good budget which makes them have an upper hand in regards to uh, 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 retaining players or getting players or attracting traction of this of these young players or these young talents mm -hmm. so what basically we are trying to do uh, and i would really want to take this chance to look into the face of corporates in kisumu and tell them this is an opportunity this is a golden opportunity you can tap into mm -hmm. uh we we as a community club can also be able to market you guys when you come on board and let's say uh, partner with us uh, just an example of Cabras uh, as a corporate it has a rugby team called Cabras LFC it's selling the name of the brand so any corporate that is in Kisumu and who wants to associate positively with this club it, this is an opportunity you can come on board we have so many uh, corporates in Kisumu who are doing uh, production, milling of sugar, milling of flour. I don't want to mention the names because of the obvious reasons. Uh, this is a golden opportunity to cut up into. So through that, you, you can, they can, these boys can be able to get job opportunities. Also, <coughs> we try and uh, uh, empower these boys by getting them scholarships. Yeah. Because these young talents have to go to school. Sure. So you can get a super talented player who is coming from a disadvantaged background. Mm -hmm. There are some few corporates who have shot like Kisumu specialists who really helped us in the past season. Okay. I believe there is chance still to do more. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, co the corporates can help us in regards to uh, job placements because uh, I want to, they can just brag a little bit. Most of we rugby players, we are learned fellas. Okay. Yes, we, we, we have papers. We don't come begging without papers. So it, it's, we, it's an opportunity for these corporates to get competent personnel, but also through helping the, uh, the, the rugby uh, as a sport. Wonderful. And also we are also engaging with the county with the same in kind of conversation, whereby we are telling them, hey, we, we have this number of players here who have the certifications, because actually we do player, player, player profiling. So if you want somebody who has done HR, We'll simply pull out from our profile and tell you, here are the guys. Sure. So we're also tamping, we're trying to have an engagement with the county government in terms of placement. They can help us in kind by employing these young men, oh, yes. by giving service uh, to the county and in turn getting a salary. But in regards, they have a condition now to play rugby for Kisumu RFC. Okay. So that is the way we can, uh, you see, uh, really be able to retain. <coughs> called, uh, it's called player retention. All right. Yeah. And uh, just, uh, before we, de we get into the uh, Dallas Sevens, that is uh, uh, the upcoming tournament, I would like to know uh, which competitions uh, does the, as the, as the uh, Kisuma RFC have been involved in, and uh, what plans do you have to take the club to, uh, to the next level? Yeah, basically, uh, historically, I can say Kisuma RFC has been playing the top fly league, that is the Kenya Cup, oh, yeah. for quite some time. Um, then, uh, when the COVID hit came, it really hit us hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, to run the sport is also an expense. Yeah. So uh, we were disadvantaged in regards to resources and also now honoring our games. And uh, we were relegated to the, to the second uh, division league or the second tier league that is a championship. But we fought our way through, uh, through uh, the uh, partnership with the Kisumu specialists that they really came in handy. And through their support, I can uh, probably say now we are back to Kenya Cup. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this new season we are competing in Kenya Cup. <coughs> I want to sound a, a, a warning to our competitors that we are here to stay. <laughs> Watch this all space. Right, right. We are not going, coming in, in, in fluky ways of trying. We know what we want. Mm -hmm. And in the next uh, four seasons, we have to be title contenders. Mm -hmm. We have a clear work plan on how we want to uh, take this trajectory up to the final. So, Give it four years, trust you me, we'll have 
to bring the cup in Kisumu and if all goes well. And you are here to stay and that is going to be proved in the upcoming Dallas 7. Exactly. And just uh, briefly to bring or you bring you on set Mr. Eric Ondeki. You are part of the management or the officials that will be uh, ensuring that the, the upcoming tournament that is the Dallas 7 is a success. Briefly tell us uh, you may want to tell us when did this uh, tournament begin and what has the, been the journey like we understand uh, it is an annual event but then uh, there are some two years or three they between two six and eight that it took a brief hiatus maybe you want to tell us how the journey has been like uh thank you mm -hmm. uh first of all before even talk of dala yes. just to say that as a club we are repositioning ourselves oh, yes. in line with the sports act mm -hmm. to make it a corporate entity that will be able to enable us sustain ourselves mm -hmm. going into the future mm -hmm. Now, Dallas Sevens is a premier tournament. Uh, it's a Sevens tournament, part of the uh, Sevens circuit uh, under Kenya Rugby Union. Mm -hmm. So it was started, the first Dallas Sevens happened in the year 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we were added when we did a bid. It was just a rotational. Uh, before then, we had Christie's, we had Kabeberi, and we had Prince Lou and Mombasa. So there were four legs. Dallas was added as the fifth leg. So since then, it has become a core part of that uh, seven circuit. Mm -hmm. Of course, due to financial challenges, organizational skills, we had um, a lull in 2007 due to post-election violence. Mm -hmm. And again, to 2010, I mean 2020, mm -hmm. 2021, mm -hmm. due to COVID. So, over and above, so if you look at it, we are doing the 18th edition of Dallas Sevens mm -hmm. this year, which coincidentally marks the 10th anniversary since the passing away of our uh, patron, the late Fidel Odinga. Mm -hmm. What uh, I mean, this is a tournament that is uh, used uh, uh, that is used to attracting masses. Do we have plans in place to ensure maybe uh, it, this time it, tra it attracts the number that it, it deserves, and maybe just the plans to mobilize <coughs> as many as possible to uh, uh, to partake in the sport? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As as a club and as a tournament director. Ours is to grow Kisumu RFC and we've uh, Dallas Sevens and we've seen it grow in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Uh, last year we had a crowd of about 6,000 mm -hmm. for the last three days. Now this year we want to make it even better and exciting mm -hmm. for our fans. Uh, last year for those of us who are rugby lovers, we had a Victoria 15 tournament which is, was part of the Western pre-season uh, event. And we did have it under the floodlights. Mm -hmm. It was awesome and the crowd was superb. Mm -hmm. We didn't expect that crowd, but we had about 4,000 people grace that occasion. And remember, that was just one match, mm -hmm. I mean, two matches that we had. So this year, mm -hmm. unlike any other times, we purposing to do it from uh, Friday mm -hmm. at 12 p.m. The last game will be played at 10.30 uh, mm -hmm. uh, under floodlights. Yeah. Then on Saturday, definitely it's the whole out of rugby, it will start at 8, 8 a.m. The last game will be played at midnight. Mm -hmm. So we want to give the rugby fans and lovers a test like no any other. Mm -hmm. And even Kenya rugby, they are they're still asking questions, but we want to tell them, come and experience what we are capable of doing in Kisumu. We have a fantastic stadium, mm -hmm. fantastic facilities, and the county has supported us, so why not? Mm -hmm. The, sport, uh, the tournament will be staged at the Jomo Kenyatta International uh, Stadium that is in Mamboleo. Sure. Uh, I want to know the scope of the teams that will be uh, partaking in that tournament. Is it just the teams from the Western Kenya region or just from uh, the entire uh, uh, country? Uh, Dallas Sevens attracts cream de la cream of the teams. Mm -hmm. No Kenya Cup side will miss. So the lovers of KCB, Cabras, Kisumu, they are here. Of course, we have our neighbors, Uganda. We've already reached out to Heathens and Cobbs and uh, Ginger Hippos. Mm. They are looking into our consideration. Last year, we had uh, Ginger Hippos grace the occasion. Mm. So this year, we are looking at hosting a Ugandan side, and that has been our, our, notch, our niche. Mm. We are the only circuit that normally invites foreign teams, apart from, I think, Driftwood, that have done it. Mm. So this year, yes, we have top notch teams, Uganda, our neighbors are coming, uh, KCB, Cabras, Oilers, Nakuru, Mwamba, name them. Mm. And so to our boys in Kisumu, I just want to tell the boys that uh, Kisumu RFC are title content contenders. They've been uh, preparing pretty well because uh, 
as you said, our sponsors have been up and really pushing the team to give a good account of what they are doing. So, yes, there we are at the main cup. All right. Of course, we do give teams also in the second division. Mm -hmm. We have a whole 40 teams to be in Kisumu for three days. Okay. Yeah. 40 teams in Kisumu for three days. That is going to be quite an, a spectacle uh, for the fan base. And uh, uh, this annual, uh, an annual tournament or the annual event. Uh, the fans would want to know what is going to be different this year. That is, uh, maybe they can't look up to so specifically. Oh, mm -hmm. over and above, out of the pitch, we have plenty to give them. Mm -hmm. There is Shere, mm -hmm. we've uh, lined up top notch DJs in the country. Mm -hmm. We're trying to talk to one of the international musicians who is coming in. Mm. So once we seal the deal, we'll be able to release the names to them. Yeah. So this is going to start on Friday. So let them come in on Friday. There's Sherehe. Mm. Uh, those ones who have children, there's a children corner mm. to be there. So it's a family event. Don't uh, feel left out. Just carry your children around. Mm. They'll be provided fun opportunity. So mm. it's, it's, it's an all family event, mm. fun. And of course, security is guaranteed. All right. Yeah. Well, in the interest of time, Eric, I would like to know: Western Kenya region is quite big; is a big name in terms of uh, uh, rugby sport. Apart from the Dallas Sevens, and uh, uh, like you mentioned, um, uh, uh, you mentioned about uh, partnering with corporates uh, to, develop, to nurture talents. Apart from the uh, Dallas Sevens, what other competitions maybe are in the pipeline to ensure that this rugby sport is taken up in Ochaya? Just to tell our fans. There's a lot that is coming. Uh, we're already planning for a second edition of the Victoria 15th uh, Rugby Tournament. Mm. And this year, unlike last year, we already have invitation and confirmations from uh, six Ugandan teams. They'll be participating. The competition will run from uh, uh, October uh, 6th. We intend to run it up to around November the first or second weekend. Uh, we are lining up another international match between Kenya and Uganda, the Elgon Cup, an epic battle that is uh, historically known between these two teams. And um, that is a crowd puller. For us, Elgon Cup is the epitome of everything. It's superb rivalry, superb temp uh, atmosphere. We're itching to go. Remember, last year we did not have Elgon Cup, so we're really yearning to be in Uganda. And spoil the party for them. All right. Thank you so much, Eric and uh, uh, Jay Cox. Uh, it has been, I believe it has been a wonderful conversation regarding uh, the, sport, the rugby sports, especially in the Western Kenya uh, region. And we'll be looking to, uh, up to, uh, forward to more conversations around uh, this sport to make sure that uh, actually more corporates come on board and help develop the sport, especially from the Western Kenya region. Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, Daniel, that has been Eric, uh, Jay Cox Movali and uh, Eric Ondieki, who are part of the management of Kisumu Rugby Football Club that is based in Mamboleo here in the lakeside the county of Kisumu. Tell, talking to us about the journey of Kisumu RFC and also the upcoming uh, Dallas Sevens that will be staged from 30th of June all through to 2nd of uh, July, that is next month. And like you had the mention, it's going to be a complete fanfare. It's going to be a, a spectacle to behold. And uh, that is the reason they are calling upon the uh, rugby, rugby fans uh, to show up and uh, make the most out of that fanfare and also uh, it's, this is the first time that the tournament is going to be actually held in uh, under floodlights, and just uh, imagine that picture being uh, being able to watch a sports tournament in Kisumu at night. You see, you mentioned that there is a match that is going to be staged at uh, uh, from ten or uh, from ten that is in the evening, and also one at at midnight. That's a, a, a spectacle, I, I believe. Uh, rugby fans who didn't want to miss. And uh, on that note, I believe. You going, uh, there is a more interview in the studio, and on that note, I'm going to hand it back to you in studio so that we'll continue to, uh, to, to, to continue with that interview, even as I have more discussion with them regarding the upcoming uh, Rugby 7, Dallas 7s here on this other side. Daniel Lohome, it is back to you. <laughs>